If you're curious about carbon transfer printing, you've come to the right place. Welcome to part five of my five part series on carbon transfer printing. In part four, we went through the sensitizing of the carbon tissue and its exposure to ultraviolet light. In this final episode, you will see how I transfer the exposed carbon tissue onto a sheet of paper and finally develop it out with just hot water. Let's not waste any more time and get at it. Okay, it's time to mate the exposed tissue with the substrate. And I've set up a bath here of water and I'll out I like to work with a temperature around 15 degrees Celsius and I'm 14.9 which is perfect. Um, you got to be really careful with your mating bath. You want to make sure the water is fairly neutral or if not slightly acidic. My tap water is quite alkaline based so I put a little bit of vinegar directly into the bath. Okay, so I, I uh, soak the exposed tissue in the bath for three minutes. And when there's 30 seconds remaining, I'll slip the my substrate in. In this case, it's the acrylic sized Arches Platine. So I'll go ahead and slip that in. Start my timer for three minutes. A few moments later. Okay, I've got my size paper ready to go. I'll be inserting that right now. And I'll pull tissue, put it face down, and pull it as soon as my timer beeps, let it drain. Okay, so they are mated together and now I'm going to squeegee them. All directions. And I will put plate glass on top. Now some people, they'll put the weight on and they'll leave it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I just put it on for the small prints. I, I only keep this glass on. Um, for as long as it takes me to prepare the hot water development bath. The only time I keep this glass on for long, longer, up to 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes, is when I'm making large prints, like my 14 by 17. I find I get better transfer that way, but with these little ones, short time seems to be fine. Okay, put the tissue in, insert it to the bottom, put my little rocks on, everything at the bottom and I'll leave it like this for three minutes this way the hot water can do its thing and soften up the unexposed areas of the gelatin a few moments later and I'll separate the tissue normally I do it this way, this direction, separating really nicely, and I'll wash this and I'll reuse it. So here is the gloppy mess, and um, normally I like to take it out and lay it on the top, but this paper is really heavy, so it's going to sink to the bottom. Start to sink over here. And I don't really, I don't feel comfortable letting it touch the bottom because it might scratch the really delicate gelatin. Let's see if it's touching the bottom. Gently bring it back up. Looks like a bloody mess, doesn't it? So just agitate it vigorously. So 
sort of see an image there. Can you guys see that? It's almost clear, a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to pull the print out and I'm going to dump this water and change it for some cleaner water. agitating it gently. It looks as cleared as it's going to get. Still some black coming off though. So. Okay, now what I like to do is I just like to take a sponge and just go along the edge and remove the really slight dark stain that didn't come out. It's not really a stain, it's just a bit of residue. It didn't come off. Okay, that looks pretty good. Slip it in the warm water one more time, and then I'm going to put it in cold water. And the cold water will just help set the gelatin. And I'll hang it up to dry. Once it's dry, I'll scan it and put it in the video so you can see it properly. But it turned out really well. I really like it. Oh. Well, that wraps up my five part series on how I make a carbon transfer print. Really glad you guys stuck it out this long. I had a lot of fun doing that. If you have any questions, Please don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comment section. Now, I've got to clean up the dark room. Anybody want to help? No. Fine. I'll do it by myself. Oh wait, the Canucks are playing. I'll clean up tomorrow. <laughs> See ya.